Hey, creative friends. So today I'm going to share with you 10 rules of art or watercolor that I have come across in my art journey that I have broken and I did not uh, fail. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that we know there are these rules in watercolor or guidelines and you've come across them and you feel like, oh, you have to follow them because you want a successful painting. Well, some rules are meant to be broken and I am one of those kind of people from a young age that always question rules and question authority and I always um, you know just kind of go with the gut feel and if a rule uh, or a guideline or a tip or an advice comes I come across it and I don't resonate with it I don't just I don't go for it I might try it once or twice but if it doesn't work for me then it's just out of the window so I believe that when we paint, uh, we do want a successful painting every time, but at the same time, we tend to get bogged down by rules and guidelines and so on and so forth. So um, anyway, these are the 10 rules that um, I have come up with for this video for you, and let's get right into them. The first rule I've come across is um, some teachers say you just got to start with a clean palette every time that you got to wash your palette and um, start with a clean palette when you want to start with uh, a painting. And I used to get really, really weirded and worried when I see uh, artists that, you know, have a messy palette and they start painting with this straight away. And it would just baff baffle me, like how are, am I supposed to come up with colors when I don't have a clean palette to sort of like start on? I realized after watching some wonderful artists do this, Jenna Rainey is one of them who taught me, is to use, you can actually use the co colors that are already, you know, dry on the palette to uh, create a, a new painting. So, and if you watch my channel, you know that I do that quite a lot. I love to use like the dirty pinks, sorry, dirty greens, and then the dirty grays that are on my palette here. And that's definitely um, a rule that I have never followed. I don't start a painting with a clean palette unless it's actually extremely muddy and gross and there is an intention and a, and a color that I want to achieve which is rare anyway because a lot of times I paint from the gut and I paint from how I feel and I just start with a dirty palette so that's the first rule that you need to start with a clean palette. Now the second rule also relating to colors is that you have to mix up your colors every time before you start the paintings. Lots of different artists have different ways of doing this and a lot of artists love to plan. They feel more secure and safe when you plan a uh, painting, you plan your color palette um, beforehand, but it's just never been a thing that I, I do. And maybe I will in the future as I get more into my journey. But at the moment, for the last three years, I don't mix my colors beforehand. I have a lot of colors, as you can see here. I don't use them all. I think every painting, maybe I use about six colors maximum. And I tend to mix them on the go or even mix them on the paper. And somehow or another, a lot of my paintings look cohesive because of that. Perhaps that I just, you know, use a couple of colors that I love a lot. And um, yeah, so I don't get too fast. I don't like planning ahead. I feel it's a barrier. If someone says that you got to mix your colors beforehand, you got to plan, it kind of just makes me shut down a little bit. And that's the last thing you want when you come to approach your art. Okay, the third rule that I've heard um, that I don't abide and don't follow is to sketch beforehand. Um, so to plan, so this is part of planning as well. So a lot of artists, when they do tutorial, they're like, okay, let's, let's do the sketch. And um, very lightly with a pencil, just plan your painting, see where you want to put where, and, uh, and then you have a more successful painting. Well, I actually... Uh, don't do that very much. Sometimes I do that if I want to make sure I want to achieve um, a defined end result and that's maybe usually when I am doing a commission. Someone's given me a, a wedding bouquet to paint and I will sketch a little bit and it does result in a more successful painting for sure. But what I realize is the process and the journey is I get less into flow. I and more into the end result and that I want to achieve a beautiful painting, which is another kind of joy, right? So when I painted my series, my landscape series, 
where I went around the, the river where I live and took photographs and I came back and I painted. I did do a very basic sketch of each of them. Um, I painted 10 of them and I it resulted in 10 beautiful little paintings which I love so much and I find them very, very precious and I'm so proud of them. But if you ask me if I got any like that joy flow state while I'm doing those paintings, actually not so. Okay, so um, yeah, if you if you feel like sketching is part of your joy and part of your practice, and you really love that, you can go ahead. But most of the time, I actually love just free flowing, just um, testing my skills in terms of how I plan without the sketching. So yeah, that's. That's one rule that I broke and I'm really happy and fine with it. The next rule that they say in watercolour is you have to go from light to dark. So when you paint your painting and if you're doing it in layers, you got to paint your light colours first and then slowly add detail as they go darker and darker in value. And that is true for you know 90% of the time, but there is a 10% time where I do put in lighter leaves in the background right at the end when I have a bit of white space here and there. Of course you can't do it if you have already um, you know put down all the paint in your whole painting and you have no white space left but if you have a white space here and there you can add a couple of uh, light leaves, lighter flowers, filler flowers here and there in the background. So the the rule that you cannot go from dark to light in watercolour is totally debunked in, in different contexts and in different situations. So that's one rule that I discovered I could break. Now the next one is that um, the saying that you only should use 100% cotton paper um, if you want successful watercolour paintings. And this is, yes, true for most of the time. I do love my 100% cotton paper. But recently, I have started using let me get it. So recently I have started using these sketchbooks by Stillman and Byrne and they are not 100% cotton at all. Uh, they're cellulose and what I discovered is that what's more important to me rather is that the paper retains its vibrancy and it doesn't dull. So there are some cotton paper 100% cotton that, yeah, it has that, you know, wet on wet spreadability, um, predictability, it stays wet longer and all that, but then it dulls when it dries. I think for me, cardi paper were like that. So um, yeah, you can have success without 100% cotton. I feel like I have in my Stillman and Burn uh, sketchbooks. So that's one rule that you can definitely break with watercolor. All right, so there's this other rule in watercolor where they say you shouldn't use white paint and you shouldn't use black paint. So there's this whole like stay away from white and stay away from black because they're like cheating almost. Um, so in fact, they say that in watercolor, you should use only the six primaries, which is a warm and cool red, warm and cool blue, and warm and cool yellow. And with all three primaries, you can reach black. You can reach a really beautiful, um, you know, layered, depth of black and, and white. You don't use white because the paper of the white of the paper should shine through. So I was following this rule for a long time and I was like in agreement with um, this theory. However, recently I've been using black in my paintings and not really just to uh, make a black uh, object or subject, but you know, to really accent in the detail, to use uh, it for line work. And also I've been using white paint and white gouache to uh, make a more pastel -y color where I don't necessarily want that watercolor effect. So what I'm saying is that you can definitely not listen to these. I mean, there's a reason why they sell white watercolor and black watercolor, right? The whole point is that you should investigate and explore on your own to see whether it works for you or not. Right, the next rule is that in loose watercolor, especially florals, is that you have to paint fast. So this one is actually not a rule I have broken because I paint fast, um, but I do realize that a lot of uh, you guys, when you leave me comments and when I teach my students, say, you paint so fast, Crystal, I can never paint as fast as you, therefore, um, I'm not going to be good at this. But that's not true. I do know uh, a lot of artists that paint slower and they still manage to uh, create beautiful flowers with their watercolor painting. So the whole point is that go at your own pace. Um, the reason why 
you know, some teachers say to maybe pick up the pace a little bit is because the whole bleeding wet on wet effect happens when the paper is still wet, when the paint is still wet. So if you paint slower, the paint will dry faster and then that effect won't be achieved as well. But if you get good and you practice long enough, you can you're able to still get that effect at your pace. Maybe it could be letting one whole layer dry and then re-wetting it and you know doing that effect on the second layer. Or it could be that you are creating the bleeds in, in different ways, in smaller areas instead of the whole large painting with humongous brushes. So remembering that you don't have to paint fast, you don't have to force yourself to go at a pace that doesn't work for you. Like if you ask me to slow down, I would be in big discomfort and misery. So I, I go at my pace and you find your own pace, totally break that rule. Another rule or rather a misconception that people have about painters and paintings is that you need to uh, do them one at a time, which is a bit silly because in watercolor, it does take a while for each layer to dry. And if you're an impatient person and you want to keep staying in the flow, you can work on multiple paintings at one time. Like for me, I have several sketchbooks that I work on and I really, really love sort of like swapping and, and doing couple of paintings at one time. And actually, it's a really uh, fun practice to do the same painting in uh, several sketchbooks and just doing slight variation of them. I have a video which I actually just released the last one called Sketchbook Florals. You can take a look at it after that where I use one um, one painting, or sorry, one reference, and I paint them in three different sketchbooks at one time. So yeah, go uh, multiple paintings at one time. I know a lot of uh, artists like have maybe even 10 paintings going one time, but those are for like acrylic or oil painting where it takes, you know, weeks or months to complete a painting. But you can do the same for watercolor as well. All right, we're going towards the end. The next rule that I feel that we can break, and this is a big one, and I can actually break this up into many, ru many rules, but you don't have to know all of composition and all of the techniques and all of color theory. I bunched this up into one rule. You don't have to know all of this at the start to paint, okay? I didn't know any of this at all. I seriously just went into tutorials and started painting flowers without know knowing any of it. Today, in today's world where there isn't a barrier of entry in art, like in the past where you probably need to sign up for an art school or commit to a, a lengthy art program at your community center, there's YouTube, there's so many ways to learn art and we all enter it in different places. Maybe for me, it's actually a good thing that I did not go to art school and did not enter it that way. And I learned things from almost, mm, not start, not like from the beginning to, I started from the end, like I was creating, I wanted to create beautiful flower paintings straight away without learning all these things. And I did. And then slowly along the way, I'm filling in my gaps of knowledge with the other way. So what I'm saying is that a lot of times we feel like really deflated and not so confident because we're like, oh, I don't know all the rules. I, I don't know what I'm doing, but you don't need to, do, you don't need to know any of it. Just dive right in, just, just paint, okay? Slowly you will fill in the gaps on your own. And if you want to take a course, you can, but you don't have to just go for it. Yeah, the final rule is one which I think a lot of us resonate with is you don't have to go to art school. You don't have to have a degree in fine arts. You do not have to have a bachelor's. You don't need to have exhibited at, in galleries to call yourself an artist or to do art seriously. You really don't. Uh, I, in fact, sometimes I feel like the, you know, the whole university industry is still a profit-making uh, place. And I, I'm not giving, I'm not, you know, demeaning anyone who has an art degree and who went to study art in tertiary level but you know there are some stuff that you do need to go to university for like maybe to be an accountant or doctor or lawyer but there are other things that you don't and art isn't one of them so is business I did marketing and communications at uni um, now you can learn all of that on your own with courses online so definitely art is one of them you don't need an art degree you don't need to have gone to art school to uh to be an artist uh, that's the rule that we all should be breaking right now 
So and there you have it. These are the 10 rules that I threw out of the window, didn't resonate with me, and I'm like, yep, whatever. Uh, if, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to this channel. And also, if you want to hear more from me, sign up for my mailing list. I do give out a free PDF I call Nine Secrets to Loose Florals. Not nine rules, nine secrets. You don't have to follow them. Um, but they are sort of like my guidelines into how I think you, know, you can create successful loose floral paintings. And trust me, they're all about not trying to contract and, and reduce and telling you what to do, but it's a very expensive, very freeing ways of, of doing it. And um, I'm coming up with a course that I should be releasing next year, and I'm really excited about that. So if you do want to follow me and hear more about what's going on, do pop your email into my mailing list, and I'd love to stay connected and in touch with you. In the meantime, stay super creative and break those rules. I'll see you in the next video.